Hi my friends, welcome back. Today I want to talk about something that any of us who've been transitioning our hair, no matter how great we are about it, no matter how comfortable we are about it, like if you've been seeing my videos, you know that from early on I was kind of like, yeah, I'm just going to go out like this and I mean of course I might have my hair up, but I'm not going to bother to hide this. I don't really care. If you're going to be looking at my hair that much and thinking about it, whatever and you'll forget about me anyway two seconds after you turn your attention to the next thing that you're gonna like you know say whatever your little mental mumbo jumbo is anyway so i don't care however no matter how much any of us are in our space about that no matter how comfortable most of us might be or some of us might be running to the store with our roots showing like this and as it gets longer it does get easier because like you know when it's this long out people might just think that you are super behind on dyeing your hair but as it gets longer and longer and longer they start to probably really catch on to the fact that you're just not planning on dyeing it anymore and you're growing it out so kudos to you because you know what it takes some courage to do that and to go around like this. So if you're one of them, yahoo. And even if you haven't been, even if you're someone who feels the need to disguise it on more of a general level, still yahoo to you anyway, because growing it out and making this move is not, at least at this point, the road most highly traveled. But within that, my friends, even if you are one of the people that has been comfortable with going around with your roots hanging out a lot of the time or most of the time or part of the time, the fact still is that at least every now and then we find ourselves about to go somewhere to do something where this just isn't going to work. And so we have to consider what some of our options are. And in this video, what I'm going to be talking about is covering up these roots, helping them to blend in with the rest of our hair using eyeshadow. There are definitely other techniques we can use and I will be covering those in some videos in the near future. However, this video is going to target specifically using eyeshadow to cover this up. So if that's of interest to you, stay with me right here. know about you, but I'm not the type of person that wants to spend like $15, $20 on an eyeshadow to cover my hair. If you are, totally cool. I wanted to see if I could do it with something super inexpensive. So I went to my local big lots, largely in part because that's the closest inexpensive store near me, closer than the dollar stores, although if that was closer I would have gone there too and seen what they had. I don't really know. And I found this, and this was $3.99 ultimate brow kit, but I'm going to use it on my hair. Yeah. And we're going to see how it's going to work. Now, I do have other types of eyeshadow. Again, they aren't my preference for using them for my hair. Um, but I just wanted to give this one a try and see if this would work. And I figured I would share it right here with you. All right, so let's get this open. So here we have it. Now I'm thinking I probably don't want to like really try to do this with this tiny little brush. So I'm going to get my bigger brush that I use for eyeshadow. This this definitely would be good for eyebrows, and that's what this kit is sold as. So yeah, that's definitely good for that. Okay, so here we go. We have a few different shades, which I thought could be handy because it might be nice to put in some different shades rather than to just have one. I'm going to go in the middle right now. We're going to see how this looks. Now, of course, all eyeshadows are not created equal, so if this one doesn't cover, I'm sure one exists in the face of the universe. That'll work just fine, but look at there we go, my friends. It looks like this is working out just fine. Thank you. 
Now, if I had a little bit wider of a brush, we probably could do this a little more quickly. So, you know, that's a thought too. We could maybe get like a little flat paintbrush, something that would still fit in the eyeshadow. Like you can probably fit it in even this way. If it were wider, you could still fit it this way rather than going that way. And you would be able to cover more of your hair a little more quickly. So perhaps a visit to the art store and picking up an inexpensive little brush. One thing I've noticed in art stores is that they've got more expensive brushes where they have the better quality paints, but back where they have the little acrylic bottles that, that only cost like a buck each or sometimes 69 cents each, they have lower quality brushes there. And for this purpose, I would probably choose one of those because if the brush happens to lose a bristle or two, it's not going to be catastrophic. Unlike if you're trying to make a nice painting, you would definitely not want that to happen. Not good. So as you can see here, this is working out pretty well. I mean, I still have to do all of this and some of them over here. And so far, I'm just using this one color. And then obviously, if you really want to get do a very good job, you might want to take, you know, part out this upper layer and get down underneath there a little bit more so in case your hair moves uh, while you're doing whatever it is you're doing then um, you know it would be disguised down in there people wouldn't see that popping through but yeah it looks like this is working so there we have it my friends we can pick up an inexpensive eyeshadow or eyebrow kit from anywhere and this will probably work if by chance you do happen to pick up one and it doesn't seem to be sticking in your hair consider it's probably just that eyeshadow and not reflective of whether it will work or not because um, I have definitely had some eyeshadows in my life that just didn't stick to anything including my eye um, and I wasn't sure, because of that experience, I wasn't sure about this one, given that it was like $3.99. La la la, isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Alright. Fabulous! You know, and again, I'm just doing a quick job here. I haven't even gone in with this darker color if I want to, you know, I, and I also don't see as clearly when I'm looking in my iPad when I'm filming. I don't see what's going on as detailed as I do if I'm in my bathroom mirror with the light really just, I mean, well, I have a light right here, but it's just, it's just different getting right up in my mirror and really just being able to look at this. Um, it's just a different uh, type of way that that lands than this. So I can't see this as well as if I was doing this in my mirror. Um, so I might get some of this dark color now. And again, with the bigger brush, this would take less time. So what you would want to do is make sure that your hair is already the way that you want it because um, you, you wouldn't want to try to do this with your hair wet and you probably wouldn't get the best results if you did this first um, and then tried to style your hair. And you'd have to play with it. If you're someone that uses hairspray or a mousse, you would have to play with uh, the order. I would think of well, if you put it, well, definitely with mousse, you couldn't put this in first. That that really wouldn't work. Um, it probably can just go on fine just right after. All right. So I think if I had a harder brush, a firmer brush, one of those square head ones that are firm, and those inexpensive brushes do tend to be more stiff, which for painting sometimes is not the best thing, but for this it might be better, might work a little bit better. Another thing that might work, and I haven't looked into this, but um, 
you know, they have like those foundation powders with the different colors, the different shades. And so if you were to get one in a, like if let's say you have brown hair, like I do, if you were to get one for a darker complected person, that might work as well. As long as the color looked um, like it would like it would lend itself to the overall result that you would want. That just might be another option. Looks like I got it on my skin right here. See, if I was looking in my mirror, that, that wouldn't happen. All right. But anyway, so here we go. Like, this is definitely something that could work. You saw what I looked like before. And you can see what this looks like now. It doesn't even look like I have gray hair. Pretty cool. Alrighty then, so I have finally, after almost a year, I have been growing out my hair for about two weeks short of a year. I'm about to make my one year video, my friends, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, and I saw a video that Monique discussed this probably like 10 months ago and have never tried it until like the other day. Okay? And I actually just tried it with one of my more expensive eyeshadows on just one strand. I didn't really want to use up my more expensive eyeshadow on this. I just wanted to see if the more expensive eyeshadow would work on me. It did. So I kind of knew that it that the technique itself would work. I just didn't know if it would work with an inexpensive kit, um, but at least this one does. So there you have it. There is a root blending job um, with an inexpensive eyeshadow, and it didn't take that long to do. I would say I was able to do this in what probably less than ten minutes. Um, so if you have 10 minutes a day that you could spend doing this or 10 minutes every now and then that you could spend doing this to look nice uh, if you need to really blend those roots down and not have people just staring at your hair like you're this unkept person who just looks like a freak or whatever they might be thinking then this could seriously be an option for you and eyeshadows come in so many different colors uh, so probably just about any shade of hair you have, you probably can find something in an eyeshadow or an eyebrow type of kit situation that could work for you. If you want to find out about more ways of disguising this besides this one, consider subscribing to my channel and clicking the bell because I will be making more videos using various techniques of blending this out so that we can feel confident and sure of ourselves in situations where sporting the line of demarcation simply is not going to work. Because, like I said in the beginning, no matter how confident we feel about sporting our growing out transition, there are at least a few times now and then where we're just not going to feel that confidence if we walk into the situation like that. And so we need to have some plans. We need to have some techniques that will work and get us through in a pinch, easily and affordably. That's what I'm all about. So if you want to hear more on that, come back here. I'll see you again soon. And as always, my friend, please enjoy your day, morning or evening, whatever time in the world it is, wherever it is that you are. Peace.